David Blaustein with ABC News. Good morning, David Blaustein. Hello. Hello, McGraw. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Oh, we are great. Can we talk about Leslie Jones is now back on Twitter? Uh, Yes, we most certainly can. And, you know, uh, I'm glad she's back on Twitter. She's actually a terrific tweeter. And what happened to her was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. They suspended the guy who was responsible for it. They didn't suspend it. They they banned him for life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty despicable person, but that was just, uh, that was out of control. It was out of control, and I'm so glad she, she stood up. I'm so glad she made a stink, and, uh, and I'm so glad that sort of the good won out over the evil. Yeah, yeah, it's about time. I mean, yeah. you know, Leslie Jones is a uh, force of nature and uh, an incredibly talented person, and we should not have any patience for that type of uh, rhetoric and, and that sort of trolling, obviously. And it's awful that I even have to say that. Yeah, I no, mean, I know. It's so strange to me that we live in a day and age still where something like that can happen. But you know, you know, you. Evolution, evolution is a slow process. <laughs> but, but I'm glad, I mean, she was clearly bullied, but I'm glad that when you stand up to the bullies, the good always wins out over evil, but you have to stand up and sort of call them out and, 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 and don't be afraid to call them out. So. Yes, that's why this presidential election is so fascinating. Well, yes, um, but we're going to the movies to devoid ourselves of the political rhetoric this weekend. Do I want to go see Star Trek Beyond? The answer to that is, I'll tell you after this break. <laughs> now, um, that's a good tease, though. Yes, it is. Yeah. So the, the answer is yes, you do. Okay. You do want to go see Star Trek Beyond. Oh, I thought you were hesitating. So. Yeah. Well, that's what I do. I try to throw you off. Okay. Dramatic effect. I try to make it interesting. Yeah. yeah. I try to have different levels and nuance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kelly. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I did not like the last movie. Uh, you know, I was in the minority. I mean, that was a movie a lot of people liked. Now, diehard Star Trek fans, like really, really diehard Star Trek fans, uh, well, not, I, I don't want to make a general blanket statement, but a lot of them hated it because it didn't stick to quote-unquote canon. Mm-hmm. And you know the quote-unquote nerds get very upset when you <laughs> deviate from quote-unquote canon. So, but that was not my problem with it. My problem with it was uh, poor writing. And, and now I'm going to be a little bit of a quote-unquote movie nerd because uh, I, I like to pay attention to scripts and story structure. And, and, and there's something... You, you recognize it, but you don't know it if you don't really, uh, if you don't know about screenplays and you don't know about story structure and, you know, and, you, and you know, you're not interested in that sort of thing. And there's something called a call to action. And the call to action is that point in the screenplay or the script when the characters are uh, ready to go on the journey, the, the thing that, the catalyst that motivates them to go on their journey. And in the last movie, that call to action was so unbelievably flawed and just so stupid. And I'm going to tell you what it is, and people who saw the movie will appreciate this. They'll probably, uh, they might think I'm being petty. But there, there's this particular scene where all the most important people in the Federation, all of the most important military leaders, are all sitting in one room. But they're sitting in this one room in this building with ceiling-to-floor windows that's completely exposed with no security whatsoever. You know, if you have, like if you have the mayor of Staten Island, there's no mayor of Staten Island in New York, by the way, but if you have the mayor of Staten Island hanging out with his buddies yes. in, in, in like a garage uh, shed or something like that, in a tool shed, there will be a cop stationed outside. <laughs> you know, there's no security, so they're completely open and prone to attack, and that's like the catalyst, pretty much. And I, I just thought that was so ridiculous. And, you, you know, how could you even orchestrate that? And it just didn't, it didn't make sense to me, and it just kind of took me out of the rest of the movie. And I thought there were a lot of other flaws in the script, too. Um, now, this movie has something sort of similar where the call to action is also not the smartest or the brightest and doesn't make sense, but it's much more believable than what happened in the last movie. And this movie is so much fun. The writing is considerably better. Um, the dialogue is considerably better. And these three movies are also very much aimed at Gen Xers, mm-hmm. at least this franchise, this portion of the franchise has been, and this movie more so than 
any of the other movies. And I think anybody who considers themselves uh, uh, a Generation Xer will have a great appreciation for a lot of the references in this movie. It's just so much fun. Yeah, sure, it sells out like a summer blockbuster uh, would. It is directed by Justin Lin. He is the dude who gave us the Fast and Furious movie. Well, the last few, not the last few, not the last one, but the previous three, I think, before that. And he did a great job with those. So he's very good at those summer blockbuster sellout moments where the superficial action trumps the deep meaning of, of anything or anything real, and, but, but he makes you believe that it hasn't. It's a, it's a pretty neat trick, and he does that here as well. But uh, you forgive it, because this is one of the most star, fun Star Trek movies, period. I mean, in the whole franchise, there's even a, an action sequence uh, in this movie that's actually kind of terrifying. Hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. You're telling me that Star Trek Beyond is better than The Wrath of Khan? No, I said oh. it harkens back. Oh, okay, all right. Listen to, make... to you being a talk show host. I just, I just wanted to make sure I, I heard you correctly. No, all it right. harkens. No, I did not say that. Just... It is not better than Wrath of Khan. Okay. Wrath of Khan to me is the, is the best. Oh my goodness! There right. is a there, there is a scene in this movie. There's an action sequence that's as terrifying as uh, a scene in Wrath. It it, rem- it reminded me of that. All in right. other words, okay. where it was like harrowing and. You know, you weren't sure what was going to happen next, and even though it's kind of early on in the movie and you can kind of guess, you kind of think that, you know, certain characters are going to survive, but because it's so early in the movie, Mm -hmm. but they do such a good job of making you believe that they might not, and they actually might not. So and I, I spoil you know I don't want to give anything away, but it was just it, it was just done that well. So right. yeah, it's a, it's it's a, a terrific movie. Four right. out of five stars. David Blaustein, ladies and gentlemen, just want to make sure he wasn't bad mouthing Wrath of Khan. Uh, David Blaustein, have a good week. Thanks for checking in. Take care. You Bye. got it. Eight twenty seven. Big five fifty. KT.